Our next speaker will be Evan Hadfield. Evan is a student at the University of Texas at Austin, majoring in computer science and economics. Evan recently founded the campus organization Texas Transhumanists and has been active in the Austin startup scene, participating in events at South by Southwest, Three Day Startup, and Code for America. Evan has also attended several Mormon history conferences and considers himself a dedicated Mormon history hobbyist. Please welcome Evan. Hi. Um, so I'd like to basically lay the claim that I'm going to make a uh, definition for God. And actually, I'll overlap with some of Kathy's statements earlier, so that should me, save me some time. I don't have to delve into what I mean by the sort of universal God I'll delve into. Um, but what I'd like to uh, describe is a similarity that Mormonism shares with Buddhism um, and why specifically that similarity is important and what insights we can draw from that. Um, so first, of course, why Buddhism um, has advocates, uh, as I assume most of you are, for technological progress. It is worthwhile to consider Buddhism as the most strikingly influential form of religious practice in the technology space. Um, the first things to come to mind, of course, Steve Jobs' retreats and uh, now famous practices of Buddhist of Buddhism. Um, there's hallmarks of Zen Buddhism in making design simple. And, of course, meditation is very popular in the sort of rising creative class that we associate with the technology field. Um, and, of course, just conjuring images of the West Coast, liberal, uh, Whole Foods, electronic car drivers, as also these Buddhist um, meditators and yoga practitioners. Um, but Mormonism does not conjure up those same sort of images. And I think that's the, the issue that we're that I think needs to be addressed. Um, Buddhism today is enjoying an unprecedented renaissance with a revival in largely atheist China, but also importantly, as actually the fastest growing religion in the West, a uh, major world religion. The major Pew study of religion in the US conducted um, a few years back um, found that Buddhism was actually primarily made up of American born adherents, whites and converts. Um, in sharp contrast to other uh, non-Western religions, which were mainly made up of immigrants. Um, only one-third of American Buddhists are actually Asian, and three out of four Buddhists in America are converts, the highest of any single religious group. Meanwhile, less than one out of four Mormons in the U.S. are converts. Mainstream Christianity in the West, and Mormonism in particular, um, are experiencing major demographic decline in a key demographic, mine. Um, males in their mid to late 20s are leaving the church faster than ever, and by many measures, the rate of active participation in the church in the U.S. is actually in decline. Some of those that leave will seek other avenues for spirituality, and Buddhism is successfully thriving as a part of that sort of spiritual uh, conquest. Not only are most American Buddhist converts, but half were raised Christian. Um, and I think this is the most interesting part. Only Buddhists reported a higher life satisfaction rate than Mormons. Um, now, I'm not going to try to argue for any specific tenets of the Buddhist faith or that there are any more valuable tenets of that religion um, over any others. And I'm not even going to try to argue for a specific track of Buddhism. Um, and any formal student of Buddhism is probably going to cringe at my crude summation of Buddhist teachings and my lumping various sects together. Um, but for the purposes of what I'm trying to argue, I find it proper to lay out just a few uh, of Buddhism keys, Buddhism's key uh, tenets. Buddhism's most important teachings are summed up in the Four Noble Truths. Um, essentially, it's that life is filled with suffering, which is caused by our uh, mortal cravings, and that these cravings can, by, can be extinguished by following um, a concept of rightness, essentially a moral code. Um, Zen Buddhism, uh, the most popular variant of Buddhism in the West, is atheistic. It actually is, rejects all sort of superstitious dogma. It rejects karma, reincarnation, and even nirvana. Um, but it does demand meditation, concentration, and physical discipline as a means to achieve enlightenment. A state of mind where the individual comes to realize him or herself, or what other gender, as part of a universal oneness. 
The word to describe this connectivity is satori, the idea that all living things share equally in the eternal. It is intentionally left vague, subjective, and mystical. Um, Buddhism generally teaches that by coming to this union with the world soul, man's ego disappears, and therefore the problems of ego and thus suffering disappears. This is the fundamental idea I want to build upon now. The Mormon God has a physical, more advanced being is quite congruous with transhumanism's belief in the eventual immortality and uh, power of posthumans. This creator God is, however, a very Abrahamic concept of divinity. It describes a physical being in an advanced state who is the ultimate initial cause of our existence. In Buddhism, as with other Eastern religions, there is no concept of a first cause or creator. Thus, the insight I want to pull from Buddhism to today is an entirely separate, although not entirely new, as clearly Kathy has pointed out, definition for God. The oneness of all present, past, and future experiences. Um, the, this God is the collective manifestation of the universe experiencing itself. It is this collective experience, the most incredible, beautiful, and misunderstood process in the known universe. Um, Joseph Smith's com- cosmology gives the most earnest and sincere glimpse into what I feel is a fundamentally Mormon interpretation of this universal God, uh, at least before Brigham Young got a hold of it, and as with most things Brigham Young did, kind of ruined it. Um, <laughs> Uh, in 1833, near the beginning of his ministry, Smith declared, um, as Kathy pointed out, that glory of God is intelligence, or in other words, light and truth. Um, I will take that as meaning light for its immaterial and yet morally illuminating quality and truth for its uh, eternal um, essence and key part of the universe. He is essentially describing information, and if you're familiar, I'm, and I'm using that in a sort of quantum physics uh, term of the word, the most fundamental, simplest element of the universe. Um, Interestingly, there's a similar concept in Buddhism, that of the Dharmakaya. The Dalai Lama describes it as a space of emptiness, inherent clear light, the essential nature of the mind. It is out of this Dharmakaya that all things are created and existed in their earliest form. It is the most reduced essence of everything. Again, information. It is, um, and it sounds equivalent to the concept of Mormon intelligence. Um, With these dual perspectives, we gain insight into how this definition of God takes form. God himself, finding he was in the midst of spirits and glory because he was more intelligent, saw proper to institute laws whereby the rest could have a privilege to advance like unto himself. Um, Taken from Joseph Smith's now popular uh, or well-known King Follett sermon. Um, Viewing God as our collective experience or consciousness, I think, casts a transhumanist light on Joseph Smith's description of the process of godly evolution. God, like the human body, naturally developed from its most primordial state, um, a means by which to bring the smallest unit of which it is made, a cell, into a higher form resembling the whole. In the body, it is the process of reproduction that enables this sort of cell dividing and replicating itself into a very complex, functional, conscious human being. In God, and the God I'm describing, it is the process of refinement through technology, knowledge, and creating meaning through experience that brings us as individuals into a higher state like unto itself, the full realization of a post-humanist, a post-humanist future where intelligent beings are super-conscious and infinitely intelligent. <laughs> So essentially, to wrap up, I'm not arguing that this is a new definition or we need to redefine God um, and that I, because it, it doesn't conflict with, I think, the Abrahamic contact or the new God argument. Um, but what I do think it does is defines God in a way that um, is congruous with the sort of awe and devotion that we attribute uh, traditional concepts of God. Um, the God where we are all a part of it, where we all share in the experience and derive our morals from our shared uh, conscious and collective brings us empathy and the value of diversifying our uh, technologies and education and knowledge. That is something worthy of devotion, worthy of a moral code to follow and, and praise and praise and song. The scientific God, the God of Dawkins, the God of Mormonism, the 
creator God through natural scientific means still uses pretty cruel evolution and death and suffering to achieve its means. And while it can be viewed in a valuable light, I will argue that through Buddhism and through kind of seeing where Joseph Smith and Buddhism intersect, we derive a more powerful and more spiritual and lasting meaning of God. Thank you. Yes. Sure. So the question is, um, Buddhism is associated with the feeling of like detachment from material possessions and suffering, and like reducing your lifestyle, and that seems incongruous with normal transhumanist uh, ideals. Um, I think that what we are seeing with uh, Buddhism and why it is increasingly popular is for its sense of simplicity, and that the technology sphere where we have all these gadgets and wires and everything is very complex and we just want to buy all these gadgets, I think is really just a temporary state and we'll look back on as, wow, that was kind of a crazy couple of decades where we had a bunch of stuff. But what we're seeing now is a glimpse of technology is ubiquitous. It's seamless with the natural world and we don't really recognize it as separate. And I think that's where Buddhism is going to continue to research. Sure. Yes, so the question is, with, is am I saying um, with the scientific view of God, it's lost some of its awe and trying to reestablish that traditional awe, yeah. essentially? Uh, yes. Okay. I, I essentially do think that um, like we, can, we can make a good case for an Abrahamic God that there's a being in an advanced state, yeah. but by doing so, we lose a lot of that power and oomph and motivation for doing good things. I think if we take a sort of Buddhist approach to it, and, and really what I think Joe Smith was getting at, um, I think it restores some of that power. Uh, one more? Or, sure. Um, just a kind of a question and comment. In terms of, you referred to the Mormon God as being in similar to other Abrahamic gods, a first cause. And I wonder if you recognize that in terms of the quote you gave for Joseph Smith of God finding himself amongst, does it imply not a first cause God, but rather a God that did exist in the in existence, the eternal setting, mm-hmm. and and it just became God. Um, and, and doesn't that change some some of your arguments in terms of of the Mormon understanding of God as this separate first cause who did all of this stuff, rather than this God who organized and, and gave the ability for almost some of what you may have talked about in terms of the universe to become what it is becoming? Okay, so your question is. Um, if the real Mormon concept of God is like a God who exists in a already existent sphere and um, doesn't actually create or for initially, okay, um, does that lose some of the meaning? And I know we're pressed on time, so I'll uh, answer that pretty quickly. Um, I think uh, the answer is that what I'm describing 
Essentially, I, th- I think that the Mormon that that the Mormon concept of God is no different because it doesn't get really solve where our meaning comes from. It's just a step in the process. Well, that God came from another God who came from another God, and it's just like this endless chain of being, um, and it's still very scientific, like the creating and initiating. But why? And I think the why derives from the sort of Buddhist perspective. Thank you.